Damn, baby, we got a special guest for this one. He weighs in at right around 300 pounds. He's got 22s on both his biceps, and we're doing tradeaways or trade fours. God, I can't even get it right. I'm fucking cracked out right now. Mr. Carson Harris is with us today, and we are doing trade four candidates. This is week six, 12 team PPR. Dial us in. Do you have anything to say before we get into this, Mr. Harris? Hell yeah. No, thanks for inviting me. Happy to be here. And uh, definitely got some <laughs> sleeper, sleeper options for you to trade for. So, uh, yeah, <laughs> stay dialed in and stay tuned. If you Let's couldn't go. tell, I've currently fumbled that intro like Madison did in most of his games. But, uh, yeah, we are currently trying to dial in some of this stuff and trying to help you out. And if you have any other questions, we killed it on the last couple of videos. We had, like, almost, like, 20 comments or so. Wasn't it, Scatty, or something like that? We had a yeah. bunch of comments on our trade. So, uh, if y'all want to get dialed in with us, keep dropping it in there. Like, say, we will tell you anything about trades, any advice you need on there. Whether if you're trying to figure out what to do if your dad's touching you, like we'll, we'll help you out in any situation <laughs> to get you out of it. So just drop a comment, drop some love, and let's get into it. Uh, boys, who wants to start off on their first uh, trade for? I say we let the guests go first. All right, what do you dial in over there, Mr. Harris? All righty, all righty. <laughs> I see them so, eyeballs just poking through there. Yeah, really, yeah, really, yeah. Really they're, they're peeking. In. I was expecting yeah. to go first. You know, I thought we were saving the best for last. <laughs> Uh, yeah, like so, uh, you know, <laughs> I definitely would look at trading for uh, typically players that are on offenses that are clicking now, clicking at the end of the season when the going gets hot in December, yeah. especially in the quarter months. So I'm looking at running backs. I know wide receivers is the trend. Yeah. So what I would actually do is I would trade for Pacheco, um, Pollard, okay. or uh, Jameer Gibbs if you can. Okay. So. Obviously, Pollard and Pacheco are on the higher end of the tiers and will be hard for you to get. You're going to have to give up probably WR1 and a low end WR2 for it. Yeah. Simply what I've seen and how it's going. Now, Jameer, though, pretty big on him. Uh, uh, what's his name? David Montgomery is maybe not going to finish the season healthy. And obviously, he's dominating touchdown uh, touches yeah. near and around the goal zone. But uh, Jameer has a great floor. You know, he's hitting like lowest eight-ish points because uh, of PPR if you're in that. Yeah. So I, I really like him long-term and he had a lot of hype preseason. You know, a couple people have tried to trade him in a couple of my leagues and uh, I think he's worth stashing now for later. Okay. Now, you said a couple of people there, so let's break down in a little bit. We talked about Pacheco a little bit now. I think this week, too, he's he's projecting almost like 17.5. He seems like he's going to be a really good candidate yeah. for this week. Yeah, they got their so, projections up for him. Yeah, so what what are you doing to uh, kind of extract that from someone's team right there? Because I know they're seeing that number, and they're kind of like, well, bend me backwards. Let's get this rolling right now with Pacheco. Yeah. So what are, you, what are you doing to get someone like Pacheco right now? And What do you think his upside is? Yeah, it's tough. You know, typically – with teams like that who have all-time quarterbacks, so there's only a couple, uh, they'll spread the ball around, right? So I would oh, stay yeah. away from all KC wide receivers, but say that for another time. So with that being said, though, same thing with the running back room. You know, Clyde had a little stint. Um, Williams had a stint. Pacheco seems to actually be it. He's worth the hype. He's shifty. He's definitely yeah. a top 10 running back league, probably top five just in general, talent-wise. So, Ooh, you know, okay. with him posting 15, 24, 13, back-to-back-to-back in PPR, especially 24 against the Jets, one of the best defenses, um, you're going to have to give up a little bit. So, like I said, you know, probably WR1, WR2 uh, combo, two for one. Okay. Um, actually, that's not true. Scratch WR1, just WR2 for Pacheco. If you have a really solid one, maybe with a ceiling of WR1, you could probably get Pacheco. Okay. Depends on uh, how stingy whoever has him, uh, how they okay. want to be. Okay. I want to ask you something about um, David Montgomery and the Gibbs thing. Gibbs is a RB two right now. Do you foresee? You said you don't foresee Montgomery finishing out the season. Is there a report you saw, or you just think he's prone no, to injury, and that's I mean, why? T- yeah, he's prone to injury. You know, it's typically how it works. There's a couple of people I've highlighted. I mean, you could even look at C Mac and say that. Um, that's why I stashed personally Elijah Mitchell the whole season, and we'll keep it that way. But um, yeah, it's just something that if you're maybe desperate and/or also want a decent person to slide in your lineup right now. Uh, yeah. I think Gibbs is a good target. You know, he's not the worst um, in terms of what he's getting weekly, and he he could pop off. You know, and, and like I said, Montgomery yeah. as they use him more, it's going to get colder. That division is notorious for just running uh, most of the games. 
towards yeah. the winter time, and uh, I, I really like his upside. And, and you know, maybe even he gets more of a role just in general as they're driving down the field. Maybe more catches out the backfield. Uh, I just I like his upside a lot. So yeah. what do you think you have to give up to get a Gibbs? Because I was asking um, Matt today earlier. I actually a guy in my league actually offered me Gibbs today. It was a Gibbs and Dotson for Damian Pierce and Christian Watson, and I'm not deep in the running back positions. So, okay. I mean, do you think what do you think that would be a fair trade, or what do you think you would have to give up for Gibbs? Yeah, run me through uh, that trade you offered again. So, Jameer Gibbs, Jahan Dotson, for mm. Christian Watson and Damian Pierce. Yeah, I mean, personally for me, Gibbs would be uh, an upgrade over Pierce, uh, just because. They don't have that great of an O line in Texas, so and Houston particularly. Um, so that would be a tricky one. Obviously, he has way more upside. Gibbs does. Um, Watson, same thing. You know, loves going through a little bit of a patch. They're still figuring out their offense all around. Um, so I personally like him, and he's a good target for Love in the end zone. Uh, that's not a bad trade at all, really. Uh, I have a, another example actually. So um, in one of my leagues. As well, they offered me, let's see, Cortland Sutton and Jameer Gibbs uh, for Aaron Jones and Jerry Judy. So they're pretty much trying to buy low on Aaron Jones. You have to believe in the hype of Gibbs long term. Judy for Sutton, I mean, to me, that's just a wash. Um, no receiver is dominant between those two on that offense that's struggling. So uh, I, I don't think you have to give up a lot. That's why I think it's a good spot if you – want to maybe have something that could turn out to more in the future towards the end of the season but also if you want like a lower end rb2 or maybe like a flex play depending on what you have like i, I personally like gibbs a good amount okay i mean i don't know man i think with gibbs i think you could wait three more weeks with him because he's he's having hamstring yeah. issues right now and you can just keep letting his price getting reduced i think someone who's also a similar candidate with this and who's been going through it is ramondre stevenson you could have traded for him a couple weeks ago but now like it's, it's He's even worth. He's not. Even, I don't even know if he's worth dirt. To be honest, like yeah, that's where fantasy now. managers are right now. So as far as Gibbs goes, if you're going to take an opportunity on Gibbs, I think you need to hold off for at least another week or two because keep letting his value keep keep going down, and people are just like, I don't think this shit's going to happen, and then just hope for that end of season run that most times when rookie running backs try to break out. Um, but, I mean, it also, too, a lot of these trades, when we're talking about this, it also depends on your team. Are you a 4-1 team or are you a 1-4 team? So, you know, do you need wins now or do you need points later? Like, all that kind of stuff. Um, so, yeah, Scatty, uh, break down some of your trade for targets because I feel like uh, Carson's dialed up a bunch now. So, uh, you know, yeah, for uh, sure. you got to follow up behind Daddy. Yeah, it's going to be hard to do. Um, Daddy uh, for me, that was a waste of time. So. <laughs> yeah. Um, but anyways, yeah, we'll go through mine here. I have three as well. Um, the one I really like is Christian Watson. I think yeah. trading for him could be good. I know you said the Packers offense is struggling to figure it out. Jordan Love is really not that guy. But you saw what Christian Watson put up last night with a terrible quarterback, terrible kind of game plan. And uh, he even put up like 12 points. So he could even be like a flex play. Like I know on my team, I currently have um, Diggs and Chase in my WR1 and 2. And I have Olave in the flex. So I don't really need Christian Watson. Um, but maybe on a – I would play him on a bye week on one of those, when one of those guys have a bye. Um, that's a good flex play and on really on any team, I feel like. So trading for him, you could probably buy him low, just try to sell the fact that he's on a Packers offense and they're really not going to go anywhere. Um, yeah. I think you could probably trade him for maybe a WR bench player or something like that. Um, moving on, I also have Waddle and I have James yeah. Cook. Waddle showed flashes of greatness and what he could do <clears throat> last game um, with with the uh, who did they play last game was it the Giants? Yes, I'm pretty sure. Yeah, the Giants in Miami. He showed what he can do and what he's meant to be doing all season long. I think he put up 15 fantasy points, caught a touchdown. Um, that's the Waddle we re, we are used to seeing, um, and really it's just for him getting on the field. Mike McDaniel is gonna give him looks, continue to give him looks throughout the year, and who knows? Maybe Tyreek goes down, maybe. I know A chain's potentially on. He's potentially on IR, or is he on IR now? Was that announced today? Uh, potentially. Okay, potential. Yeah, potential on IR, and just the the amount of guys that Miami have. Um, there's going to be guys that go down, and Waddle's role is going to increase and increase. So, get them now while you can. I think um, a lot of times too. Like I know Tyree kills the WR one on that team, but you could make the argument that Waddle's a WR one in fantasy. 
um, just based on how his role in that offense. And then ending on James Cook, you can really buy him low. He had a really down week this past week, very uncharacteristic of him. Um, and you think he only has one touchdown this year. So imagine if the touchdowns start flowing. Um, he's going to be a force to be reckoned with. I mean, you think he had like three or four fantasy points, maybe five last game. But you also have to think, too, that was in London. Maybe his body was off, his body clock or whatever. Yeah. I'm just going to chalk that up to a bad week. He's going to prove next week that he's going to get another 15 points. That's mm. been the MO of him so far. Um, so try, try to buy um, James Cook low and pick him up. I think he's a good trade. Yes, yeah, side note on that too, you know, they're about to play the Giants. So if you're desperate for a win yeah. and you're able to get your hands on Cook, that's another good pickup. <clears throat> yeah, I mean, yeah. with Cook, you got to – I think the way you got to look at Cook is because if you look at all the games that he's played in, he really has his kind of crater weeks is when Buffalo gets behind. And when Buffalo, I mean, which doesn't happen a lot, but when Buffalo gets behind, they really do not check it down to him at all. They're not running it. Allen's just slinging it around. He's trying to throw to Diggs, trying to throw to Davis. He's trying to throw to tight ends. He's trying to get it down the field. So I think that's, too, where James Cook craters. And he also craters, too, because they completely take him out of the lineup when they get into the uh, red zone. So, and unless that role changes, the ceiling is capped, but yet you got to like that Bills are going to be ahead in most games. So, game script for him mm-hmm. will most likely be good, but you do have to understand if it's a game where they could, like, it's kind of hard to pick it out. No one saw them get behind against the Jags and just that kind of shitty game. And I, I would scratch it up as a bad game, but he does, I feel like he does have some kind of ceiling. So, do kind of understand that when you're trading for him. Yeah, and I think he'll always get a solid 15 points. I, I think that's pretty guaranteed. I, just, I think he just had an off week last week. I wouldn't really worry about that, but that's an opportunity for you to to buy low. Yeah, yeah, and to wrap up this trade for segment, I'm going to come in and I'm going to bring in that heat, baby. And I'm going to start it off first with that boy C.D. Lamb. I said this the week before, and guess what? He's even cheaper. And I said that, too, because he was going into a 49er matchup. It was already a bad matchup. You knew Dak, fucking Dak Prescott, was going to get sacked. He was going to throw interceptions. He was going to do everything that Dak is supposed to do. And now his everyone's like, has C.D., and it's like, what the hell did I do? I, I probably drafted him. That was probably my first pick. And uh, now uh, he hasn't even done anything to, like, match up to what pick that he got picked at. So – you try to figure out, okay, CD, you look at his schedule and just go click through it. And, I mean, there's nothing but green from, like, about week 10 on. And even playoffs look juicy as hell. So, with CD, I think you really need to bear down. And he gets to play Philly twice. And I'm a Philly fan, and I can tell you this. If you're a wide receiver going against Philadelphia, you will get points. I mean, I think they got pretty lucky and they got a little bit better on defense this up or this past weekend against the Rams, well, I thought it was going to get absolutely cooked looking at the first half. But uh, CD will have a day against, I can tell you for sure, against two games against Philly. And he's got plenty of more matchups coming up. And he does have that it factor. There's really no one else on this team, I think, rather than Tony Pollard who's catching passes on the backfield who really like scares me as far as pass catchers for that team. And another one that I like is Mr. Chris Olave. Fantasy owners have to be concerned about him because they're sitting here like, what the hell happened with him? This week, he had a touchdown that saved him. And then the week prior, he put up like one point. It was absolutely atrocious. And if you look at these games, let's break down the game. So last week, he had a very, very, very late injury, which was the ankle roll. And he was also getting work on the sidelines prior to the game, which I didn't even know about until I listened to it and read up on it this um, before I did the waiver wire show yesterday. So... You have to kind of understand that. So, okay. Then they got up by, like, what was it, like 21 nothing, like pretty quick. And it was like, well, game script, he, he shouldn't even really be out there if his ankles is rolled and he's injured like that. So why the hell are we going to put him back out there? And that's kind of exactly what happened. And then you also, to look at the game prior to that, they put in Derek Carr, who should have never been in on that game. He was His passing was awful. Look at all the metrics when he was throwing during that game. It was god-awful. No one had a good day as far as catching the ball. I mean, it was a lot of checkdowns to Alvin Kamara, who had a day. And that, that was about all his shoulder really wanted to do. And he missed on a deep ball, too, with Olave, I believe, during that game. And he was completely wide open. So you got to think there's going to be some regression for Olave. Now, I'm not saying he is going to be a top five wide receiver, but I'm saying he could easily be a strong to upper wide receiver too for sure, and he can regress back. And you can try to get him right now low, which I think this is probably his lowest he will be at right now for the remainder of the season, considering their upcoming schedule that they have. It's pretty juicy. So, yeah, yeah I mean, that's – that. 
That's most. I have a lot in another league, so. Yeah, I mean, and another person I'll sprinkle in, and it's only because if you can get him dirt cheap, pick up Stevenson. Now, the only reason why I say dirt cheap, this offense is god awful. I don't know what's going to end up happening, but you got to think Belichick's going to change something. So picking up Stevenson, like this is super risky, but at the same time, RB is so scary now. You, yeah. If you can pick him up for like someone pretty pretty cheap, like you might be able to pawn off like a Pickens for Stevenson maybe. If uh, you got him on your bench, because currently I have one league where I went heavy on wide receivers and Pickens has been sitting on my bench. And I know Deontay Johnson's coming back, so I'm going to trade or trade high on him. And you might be able to pick up him. Maybe that's something you like or don't like. And I'm currently low on uh, running back, so I'm thinking about it in there. But try to find some way you can get him for dirt cheap. If you can get him for dirt cheap, it's worth it. But if you can get him for, like, any eh, kind of price, I wouldn't even bother. Yeah. All right. Well, I think that's it. Anything else? Uh, Carson, you got any more? Carson, you got any good. comments about my things? You trying to pick me apart or uh, what? Are you going to tell me I'm yeah, a good boy? Yeah, uh, I mean, I, yeah, you got solid points. I don't necessarily uh, back what you're putting down. Okay. You know, I, I don't like dumpster <laughs> yeah. fires, so I'm staying the fuck away from any Patriots players except yeah. maybe Hunter Henry. Maybe. You yeah, because you got him on your team. I saw that. You got him loaded up I on that team, team there. I have him on my <laughs> team. You know, I picked him up when he was T1 in like week two or three. Yeah. He's going to get his targets. He's the tight end is meant to be a bailout when you have terrible quarterbacks. And, yeah. you know, I don't think Mac is as bad as he's been playing. And, you know, there's been some comments in the news about uh, stores close to him and saying, oh, well, you can't cook good dinner if you don't got good ingredients. Dang, his wide receivers <laughs> are trash. So, yeah. look, he's got his bailout there. I'm still kind of high on him. But, um, yeah, that's the only thing. I will sprinkle in, though, one more thing to bring in. Um, and it's a little bit of a cheeky one. So I would look at Quentin Johnston. Just take one of your bench players. <laughs> doesn't matter who. Yeah. Throw a little Chargers bias in there. Because yeah. this is what's going to happen, all right? I'm big <laughs> on us, trying to make sure happen. your roster is injury proof in terms of, like, are your players set up for if your studs get injured or other studs get injured, right? That's why I have yeah. Elijah Mitchell. But the point is, Keenan, another injury prone receiver. Love him. And he's on a super high. I mean, like, Probably the best he's played in the first couple weeks of fantasy in oh, his yeah. career, right? And um, QJ is going to continue to get targets. He's literally going to fill that Mike Williams role exactly. And he may even start picking up uh, some tutties here and there as well. So that's another okay. just sleeper. He's not going to be a WR1. He's going to be, you know, flex play prob- probably at the best. Maybe if he's lucky, a WR2 low end. Um, but uh, you saw he did at TCU. And there's no reason why he can't do the same thing in the NFL with a top three quarterback. Yeah, I, I mean, I saw what he did at TCU. There's a lot of butterfingers going on there, a lot of drop balls and some brick mm-hmm. hands. So, uh, mm-hmm. yeah, it might have to be proved to me as well. But, I mean, <laughs> right now I think Palmer's kind of picked up that wide receiver uh, two for that team right now. I mean, have he? Yes. Or you think, so you think Quentin's going to overtake him this year? I, I just think he's going to provide a different aspect. You know, if you think about who's getting touchdowns in the end zone, let's say Eckler keeps – Staying on the bench for whatever reason. He's been having trouble all season. I doubt that'll be like that. He's usually yeah. injury-free. Um, who are you looking at in the end zone? You know, you're looking at your big boy Parham at 6'7", and you're looking at QJ. Like, Keenan yeah. maybe on a little cheeky slant route, but I think that's just where Herbert's going to go. And um, he's got big mittens. Go for him. Yo, he's got Throw big mittens. Throw the ball to QJ, baby. Together. Got yeah. at the Eagles. Nelson Aguilar. <laughs> oh, hey, no. hey, my favorite quote is uh, when they're going to the house that's just burning down and that Philly fan talks about catching <laughs> yeah. the kid. And then he refers to him, he's like, hey, I caught that baby. Unlike Nelson Aguilar, who dropped the ball. <laughs> All-time yeah. favorite Philly quote. Even but, the greats uh, make mistakes, man. How he's still dude, doing. Yeah, 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 for sure. But, uh, yeah, this has been a good pod, boys. Hopefully y'all enjoyed this. If you made it to this far, I appreciate you so much. Be sure to report our page and just try to get us banned or something you know something real bad but uh yeah we're no, scumbags yeah yeah thank you so much thank you for carson for uh being on here and uh yeah let's wrap this up send it out boys we'll uh catch y'all in the next one thanks for having me deuce